Okay. Excess concentration is uh, close to concentration, not real concentration. However, excess concentration also is a state where your hindrances are subsided. That itself has certain degree of concentration, uh, but it is not full concentration. Yes. You, when you gain uh, uh, jhana, then you can uh, uh, confirm it. Uh, you can rather master this jhana in five ways. In excess, at the excess concentration, you cannot master excess concentration. It is very temporary, and yet there is a certain amount of concentration, certain degree of concentration. In full jhana, called uh, the absorption concentration, which you can master in, in there are ways avajjana, samapajjana, adhitthana, uttana, pachyavekkana. That means you reflect the steps yes, you followed, that is avajjana. Samapajjana is before you attain, no, adhitthana. Adhitthana is before you attain the full jhana, you determine how long you can stay there. That is adhisthana, determination. Then samapajjana, then you attain that state. And stay as predetermined period of time. Then uddhana, you get the out of that state. And pachyavekkana means reflection. You reflect uh, the steps you followed to attain, stay, and coming out, and all these steps you can master, we can follow. All these are called mastering the jhana. Mastering the jhana. So you can do that only when you attain full jhana, but when you are in uh, Excess concentration, you cannot uh, make master your jhana. Mm. Okay, second question. Second question, Bhante, is Dear Bhante, how does one not get caught to craving and proliferation at the contact level through the five senses? How does one mindfully observe sense restraint and eventually let go? Thank you, Bhante. Okay. Uh, I think I answered this question in the past. Uh, when you become aware, this is where you need uh, mindfulness. Uh, as soon as you get, uh, as soon as you desire, that desire rises through the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind objects. Mostly they are called five. Uh, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body. These are the five uh, cords of sensual pleasure. Pancha Kama Guna. That means through the eyes, form, sound, smell, Taste and touch. These are the the objects of sense of these five senses. Through them, you have uh, uh, this you desire arises. Through the eyes, you see in the form desire arises. See in the sound, you can desire arises. See having smell, you can desire arises. Having taste, this icon arises. Having touched, this icon arises. As soon as it arises, 
since you have been mindful, you immediately become aware of it and make effort to let it go. That is a beginning effort, a beginning sort of element. Uh, that is called the Yonisva Manasikara, mindful reflection from the root, from the beginning. Here, beginning is the greed. Uh, greed, hatred, and delusion are three unwholesome roots. Non greed, non hatred, non delusion are the wholesome roots. When the desire arises, you know that is unwholesome root. And then immediately try to let it go. I gave you some examples in the past. For instance, when you try to gain concentration, paying attention to your breathing, which is a neutral object, when you pay attention to your breath, and as you gain some degree of concentration, all of a sudden you remember a very juicy piece of cake in the fridge. And then you cannot concentrate on your breathing. You keep thinking or thinking and thinking of the piece of cake. And then slowly, even if it is the middle of the night, you slowly tiptoe to the kitchen, open the fridge, and have a piece of cake and then tiptoe back and sit down then you understand that you cannot meditate after that because you loaded with a lot of sugar in the cake a lot of sugar is there so you cannot meditate you cannot concentrate and you know that and therefore you have done it in the past now, when it happened again, you immediately uh, remove it, remove it, uh, nip in the bud, let it go. You must talk to yourself. You must say, well, I have eaten cakes many, many times in the past. This cake is not something different. And uh, I can eat cakes anytime afterwards. Let me continue my practice. This is more important than eating the cake. And that increases my greed. That also disturbs my meditation. And so forth. That is, all this taste is impermanent. They all bring unsatisfactoriness. They all create my notion of self. That is, I'm, I, I become a slave to my taste. That is how you stop, your, you stop proliferation of that greed. At the beginning, you, uh, you, you detect it and let it go. Your question is, how does one mindfully observe sense, restraint, and eventually let it go. That is how you do. I spoke about <coughs> the, the, the visual, uh, what you call, remember, the taste, uh, tongue, through the desire as in through the tongue. Similarly, desire as in through the eyes, ears, nose, and body. And when the desire arises through any of the other four sense doors, you do the same thing. Okay, now let me go to the next question. Dear Bhante G, why do practitioners experience spiritual dukkha during their course of practice? What specific steps can practitioners take to liberate themselves from spiritual dukkha? Okay, that is good. Uh, so you have uh, you have uh, 
spiritual dukkha during their course of uh, practice. Your question is, what specific steps a practitioner can take to liberate themselves from spiritual dukkha? I said spiritual dukkha is uh, dukkha that you have been practicing meditation uh, very sincerely, very systematically, regularly, and and then you see all that you have seen, heard, smell, taste, touch, all of them in the past were impermanent, unsatisfactory, selfless. They are what you are seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching now also are impermanent, unsatisfactory and selfless. So you see this very, very clearly. And then still you have not attained the stream entry. Then you have dukkha, suffering. That's called spiritual dukkha, spiritual suffering. Then what you have to do, use that uh, state of this, that understanding as a basis to arouse a spiritual urgency, a spiritual urgency. That means you must enhance, in, 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 uh, uh, increase your practice and be more diligent, more mindful, and keep practicing more diligently, thinking that, of course, I have done this practice for many years, even if I don't attend enlightenment now, attend the stream entry now, this practice, I will never give up. I will attend this stage later. Even at the moment of death, I will attend this stage. So I'm so glad that I'm practicing this, and I am so glad I see the truth exactly as it is. And uh, even though I have not attained it, I will not give up my practice. That is how the person who has uh, spiritual dukkha uh, overcome that spiritual dukkha by uh, by uh, intensifying his uh, uh, practice. Uh, However, when one attains a, a spiritual dukkha, when one uh, overcomes spiritual dukkha by uh, the person overcome uh, what you call carnal dukkha by arousing spiritual dukkha, then you have a spiritual dukkha. And then by for using your spiritual happiness, you overcome spiritual dukkha. And then you using your spiritual neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling, using that, you overcome spiritual happiness. And then you have a spiritual neither pleasant nor unpleasant or upekka. That upekka also has two types, that is nanatasita upekka and ekatasita upekka. Nanatasita upekka means upekka coming through the five senses, five senses. Ekatasita upekka is the upeka coming from uh, jhanas, uh, immaterial jhanas. And then now we have only upeka, ekatasit upeka. You overcome your nanatasit upeka using ekatasit upeka. Nanatasit means numerous uh, sources 
Upeka arises from numerous sources, like ICS, no strong body and mind. Ekadhiti Upeka means Upeka arises from only one source, that is immaterial jhanic state. No matter Akasa, Nancha, Vijnanancha, Akincha, Nevsanya, all these are immaterial attainments. They all have only one upekka. That is called ekattu sita upekka. And then when we have ekattu sita upekka, that also has two levels. One is called tammayata, other is atammayata. Tammayata means that is mind. So a person who has attained the state of imp- uh, near the Upekka state, uh, that is called, that is my Upekka, my Upekka. Ekata means, what you call, Atamayata means, the person does not think that it is mine. The person knows that it is a phenomenon, phenomenon. And that is the highest attainment of spiritual Upeka. That, of course, is not an ordinary attainment. That attainment is called, it, it, that attainment is uh, the Arant uh, attainment. Okay, now that answer is a little uh, longer, but uh, uh, it you need that kind of explanation okay next question next question is venerable sir can we attain jhana in walking meditation well in walking meditation attainment of jhana is uh, difficult uh, but you have to uh, have a quiet motionless posture. Uh, perhaps sometimes you can uh, gain jhana by standing or sitting or lying down, but walking would be difficult. Walking would be good for the person inside meditation. Okay? Bhante, the next question is referring back to the the uh, the question a minute ago about how to uh, observe sense restraint uh, to liberate ourselves from spiritual dukkha. Uh, so this person was asking about how to mindfully observe sense restraint and eventually let go. I think they want to know, is the Bahia Sutta an example of how we do this? Uh, how we do this? The, 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 the example that the Buddha gave to uh, Venerable Bahia in the yeah. scene, just the scene, in the herd, just the herd. The person wants to know, I think, is the Bahia Sutta an example of how we observe sense restraint and eventually let go? Well, Is it a new question or old question? It was a new question. It was a sort of a subsequent question to the original question. They want to know how to connect the Bahia Sutta to sense restraint. Okay. Bahia Sutta is uh, uh, also very uh, uh, important Sutta. Uh, there are uh, two Bahya Suttas. One is Bahya Daruchirya, uh, other is just Bahya. Perhaps you are referring to Bahya Daruchirya. Bahya, Bahya Daruchirya was uh, meditating all his life and until he saw the Buddha. And then he also already very close to the culmination 
of his practice. So when the Buddha saw his mind highly de developed, and then he gave this very brief, short instruction, where he said, be uh, aware of seeing as seeing, not what is seen, what has seen, what will see. But in the present moment, be mindful of seeing as seeing, hearing as hearing, smelling as smelling, tasting as tasting, touching as touching, and not beyond that. So you will not get stuck on, on the, in the object. You see the action which is impermanent. When you see the action impermanent, you immediately learn to let go. So the Buddha said, na tato na idha na hurang na ube mantra. You are not here, not there, no in between, meaning you are not holding on to now, you are not holding on to what is, what will happen in the future, nor do you hold on to the, uh, in the moment. No either, no hurang. You are not here, not there, not in between. This is a very uh, subtle statement, meaning let go of your self notion, notion of self, and see this as a phenomenon, something coming into existence through the causes and conditions. When the causes and conditions go, disappear, whatever came into existence also will disappear. That is what he wants to uh, teach Bahya Dharuchiriya. Okay. The next question is, Bhante, um, how can we prepare for our death by avoiding fear arising at the time? Are there any strategies to avoid unwholesome thoughts arising? Okay. Uh, by avoiding fear arising at the time. At the time of death. Uh, yeah. Any strategies to avoid unwholesome thought arising? I think that was a good question. That is why we uh, meditate on impermanence. This is my very uh, rep repetitive answer to many questions, impermanence. So, <clears throat> as long as we are conscious, we can focus the mind on impermanence. Of course, fear of death is very natural uh, in all, every person. Uh, many people say, uh, I'm not afraid of death. When death is approaching, when it is on the threshold of death, the fear arises. When the person in the threshold of death, fear arises and try to stop it. However, if one has conditioned one's mind, to see impermanence, to experience impermanence, and see it with wisdom. Impermanence we can see superficially, but impermanence also we can see with wisdom. When we see with wisdom that all my life, everything has been impermanent, Everything is now impermanent. Everything in future will be impermanent. 
so the person will be very very much uh, conditioned to see impermanence very clearly then the moment of death will not be frightening uh, no matter how much we learn how much we know the theories so long as we have not developed our mind to the impermanence then fear arises therefore in order to avoid that fear the the real strategy is knowing seeing experiencing impermanence impermanence and that is what i must say uh, to uh, develop impermanent what you call the the in develop the knowledge wisdom of impermanence to overcome the fear of death mm -hmm. and that is why when people don't have that kind of uh training mental training they look for some uh, more fear more fear you know, something and uh, to forget it i think it is very good for us to die with awareness and buddha said if we practice impermanence every moment every day even at the moment of death we develop impermanence uh, impermanence is in our mind then we can pass away peacefully it is also sometimes possible even to attain extreme entry at the moment of death and therefore without any hesitation we must develop this teaching this truth established truth okay and the last question <laughs> dear ante you mentioned the importance of having dhamma discussions but what if we don't have people to discuss dhamma with around us what should we do well that is a good question sometimes some people are solo practitioners in their family around their in their neighbors uh, friends may not be practicing dhamma therefore it is not easy to discuss dhamma but these days as long as you are uh, awake uh, you can go to internet and there are various dumb groups uh, you can use just like now zoom uh, it's a very wonderful device uh, people get together and discuss them uh, we do it uh, very often uh, you ask question they answer your question and they ask question you answer their question like that you can do it online Uh, I think if you don't have a person to answer questions, discuss them in person, you form a group, uh, find uh, in people with the same mindset uh, to discuss them. So that, that's what a wonderful uh, habit. Uh, these days you don't have to worry about not having uh, people around you in your family and so forth uh, so long as you have a, a cell phone or computer or la what you call uh, ipad or anything you use them and use zoom discuss them <laughs> don't do things so many people do that okay uh, I think we can answer one more question. Uh, okay. The last question then, Bonte, is, is observing the breath arising and passing also vitakka? Uh, okay. Uh, observing the uh, breath arising and passing also vitakka? No, vitakka is a thought. Uh, observing wise 
uh, uh, the breath rising and falling is not a thought. It is just uh, awareness. Uh, awareness is not called vitakka. Uh, vitakka is, uh, uh, there are three kinds of vitakka. They are called sankappa, sometimes sankappa, sankappa, vitakka. These are synonymous Pali terms, synonymous. They have the same meaning. And sankappa in, uh, what do you call this, uh, noble eightfold path, uh, step two is Samma Sankappa. Sankappa has three wholesome, three unwholesome Sankappas. Wholesome Sankappa is uh, uh, Nekkama Sankappa, Avyapada Sankappa, Avinsa Sankappa. Uh, unwholesome side is uh, Mitya Sankappa. Uh, greed, hatred, and cruelty. Uh, Samma Sankappa is letting go as against greed. Uh, Samma, uh, then, uh, uh, what do you call it? Next is Metta, Avyapada Sankappa, as against Vyapada. Avyapada Sankappa means Metta practice. Avinsa Sankappa means compassionate practice, compassion. Opposite of this, Hingsa uh, Sankappa. These are called Sankappa. They have their thought, uh, inhaling, paying attention to inhaling and exhaling is not considered to be Sankappa or Vitakka. They are, they are called body conditioner. Inhaling, exhaling is called body conditioner, kaya sankhara. So, uh, in that respect, inhaling, exhaling is not considered to be vitakka. Now, uh, I think, uh, Satima, I have to stop this. There are there may be more questions, which uh, we, they can hold on to uh, for the next Sunday and thank you very much for reading the questions and I like now to stop here at, so that at least we will have 25 minutes to meditate okay all right Okay, uh, let us meditate. I like to read this uh, metta passages for you. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long or large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth. May all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother who risk her own life, to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. 
removed in this oil of all sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. Now let us meditate. Eh?
<laughs> By means of this meditative state, may I never join with the foolish. May I join always with the wise until the time on a Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be from the highest realm of existence to the lowest. May all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, friends, we end this session today. And I want to make my special metta wish. May all <coughs> those who are in hospitals suffering from various diseases, taken care of by various kinds of doctors, nurses, hospital staff. May they recover soon, return to their normal life, and practice Dhamma meditation, and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May the doctors, nurses, and hospital staff who are taking, who are taking care of these people also find time to practice Dhamma, practice meditation, and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all those who have lost their loved ones, they try to understand the nature of life and be free from grief and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all those who are in trouble spots in various parts of the world, may they find time to understand the nature of greed, <clears throat> hatred, and delusion, practice metta, compassion, and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. All those who are in the northern direction, northeastern direction, eastern direction, southeastern direction, southern direction, southwestern direction, western direction, northwestern direction, above us and below us, may all of them be well, happy, and peaceful. And finally, may they all attain Nibbana. Yep. So with this, let us end this session. I want to join people. There are about 50 people waiting for the Buddha Puja and lunch, or lunchtime. So you, I see you next week. And those who like to join me, this afternoon at three o'clock for our Dhammapada uh, studies may join me at three o'clock. Okay, with this I end this session. Thank you. 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 Thank you.